Granting access to Windows services is no different to granting access to Linux services in as much as you need permissions in order to do something. Now the main question should be why do you need permissions in order to do something? Are you not sysadmin? Well, 9 times out of 10 it falls into two groups. You're either A, a developer who doesn't have access because your system administrator doesn't trust you to, or B, you've got a segregation of duty. This might be that you're uh, let's say IBM and another party is supporting the OS which might be let's say Hewlett Packard but you need administration to the database and occasionally you might need things like to be able to restart the database service. These are examples of why you might have a segregation in duties where one party will need to do something and the other one not. Now not to fear Microsoft does have a solution to this in a domain environment. Of course the question is A, do you have a domain environment? And B, if you do have a domain environment, is your service listed in the AD policy? Now, as an example, you can have services that have multiple names dependent on the host name, which can present an issue. Or to maybe that Windows service that you're looking for isn't installed on a domain controller and therefore the policy set doesn't exist and you need to create it on an individual service whereby you need to put the AD services or in this case tools onto that server in order to create the template. So let's look at this on the point of view of a domain. At first you need to open the group policy manager then you edit the policy. In this case we don't have anything other than the default one so we're just going to open the default one. We're going to go to the Windows settings, we're going to go down to the services and from the services we're going to select one just randomly to prove a point here and show you that you can add and set the permissions at the policy level. Now this honestly is okay but depending on you know your environment you might not have a domain or alternatively you have a DMZ or multiple domains to administer and I frankly find this kind of tricky and as you see more in a DevOps world these days we rely on other tools like Ansible or Puppet to manage machines and keep them consistent so honestly eh, not a big fan of this although it does work and I'm not gonna say that it doesn't and frankly probably for most environments you should consider this. However, as I said, for Puppet and Sybil, DSC, DMZs, and those who just don't have a domain, this is not really an option. So what are our alternatives? Well, how about looking at this from the perspective of a user? So we're going to pretend with our WMI user that we are, let's say as an example, um, I'm going to pretend I'm IBM for a second and let's pretend I'm managing databases and in this case I'm going to check that the server service is running on this machine cool right now I'm going to try and check that it's running on a remote machine let's see hmm. I can't check that because I don't have permissions to check it so how do I enable that on a remote machine well let's go over to our target machine and look at how to set the permissions there. So there's a couple of things that we're going to need on our target machine. First of all, we're going to need to set the permissions, but in order to do that, we're first going to need to get the SID ID or security identifier for the user in question that we're going to use. Now I'm going to use WMI. There are a couple of variations and you can use pretty much any of the Microsoft options including logging on as the user and then seeing what additional uh, SID identifiers pop up in the registry. There are loads of different ways to do this. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, grab the WMI user SID. As you can see this is the security identifier. Really long uh, number and that's a good thing trust me. Um, and from this point of view, I'm just going to make note of that because it is such a long number, I'm not going to be able to keep it in my head. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of really fun commands to add this SID ID to the services, basically to grant it permissions. So if you haven't used SC, which is a lovely uh, command line, which basically is the service control, you have a couple of options. So I'm going to show what the existing 
currently is for this service. So this is the list of permissions. So you have your built-in accounts, all the local accounts that have access by default, and they're already there. So we don't want to replace them or get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is add to the list. So I'm just going to quickly show you the example here. So I'm going to add a bracket, a little bit of information, which is all the permissions, and then paste in the SID ID. And we're going to use this in order to generate our slightly larger command that we're going to put in. So basically overwrite the existing uh, security with our new security. And from that point of view, this is one of the only ways I've found so far in order to get around the default Windows security model without using a domain policy. So here we can see I paste that in. So we're going to do something very similar to what we did before, but in this case, instead of using the SCSD show, we're going to use the SC space SD set because we're going to set the permissions. So we're going to copy all of this and then we're going to paste it into the command line to set the permissions. Now, I've forgotten at this point to actually add the service. So let me just quickly go back and add the service at this point. It is important to use the service name and it's the name that you would see within uh, the Windows service when you look at it. So as an example, although this is called the server service, if you look at the server service, you'll also see it's called Landman server. So yeah, that's the service name. Now we're going to return to our original host and try to run the command that we did earlier, which was to see the remote server's output. Now, having added that, you can see that we now get the response and can be able to check the services. Now, take that information and think about how you might look at that from a DSC resource or a Puppet role, which would configure these permissions for you so that when a new machine is provisioned, everything works out the way you'd like it to. And then you have a really powerful way of controlling the service permissions. Now that's it for this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down and subscribe for more content.